SpongeBob has had some dark episodes that have stuck with me throughout my life. Just one bite shows an addiction being created and the torments that come with it. In Born Again Krabs, SpongeBob's soul sold for just 62 cents, exemplifying Mr. Krabs' greediness. And Nasty Patty shows an attempted murder. Although these episodes are all dark in their own regards, the episode that sticks out most to me has all three of these things raised up 10 notches. Jellyfish Hunter shows people's addictions being abused, greediness beyond comprehension, and attempted genocide. This is Spongebob's darkest episode. The episode starts out like most did at the time, with the narrator painting a picture of the beautiful fields of jellyfish. In the first 10 seconds, they show us this sign. Just remember that for later. The narrator describes the jellyfish as free, until Spongebob shows up to hunt them. After catching one and extracting his jelly, he says it is the 12th one he caught that day. He does get stung shortly thereafter, and I believe they probably all do this almost as a game. Sponge catches them and they get to sting him. As in the next scene, the mark goes away as he chases a blue jellyfish. Sponge drops some good info here, saying that he has caught every single jellyfish there besides this blue one. Well, it's just you and me again. I've caught and named every jellyfish in this field at least once. That is 4 million catches, not counting duplicates. This is important because it shows the jellyfish to not be lethal creatures and the blue one antagonizing them adds to their playful nature. But let's fast forward a bit, and Sponge is munching on a Krabby Patty with some delicious jellyfish jelly. After moaning and joy, the customer next to him tries out the jelly on his patty, and this leads to him becoming extremely euphoric after a single bite. He breaks out in a song and dance, informing everybody of how amazing it is. This continues to him telling Krabs, Sir, this is the greatest thing I've ever eaten. I'm gonna come back here for lunch every day for the rest of my life. Let's rewind and examine this whole scene. The jelly gave the customer a very intense reaction and created such a feeling that he started dancing. The feeling was so good that he is going to come back every single day to experience it again. From how he and the other fish were behaving, it seems like the jelly is highly addictive and it leads to these euphoric feelings. Even Spongebob, after catching 4 million jellyfish, was moaning in pleasure while eating his. That leads to the question, is he addicted as well? I'm gonna say most definitely so. I mean, just at the start of the episode, it was established that he had caught 12 jellyfish in just that one day. During the dance sequence, we see the fish prepare 9 sandwiches with the jelly, and the same jar also made the first two, plus one more for Mr. Krabs. So one jar can make at least 12 Krabby Patties. From Spongebob's morning hunt, he had enough to make 144 sandwiches. Not to get too into the math, but Spongebob is definitely a full-blown addict to this jelly, and he has been for a very long time, which might explain some of his future actions. After Krabs sees an easy way to make money, he asks a professional crackhead to catch him some money fish. Sponge agrees, but just asks that he takes care of him, as they are his way for an easy fix. From here, we get a montage of Spongebob catching jellyfish and coming up with new and creative ways to get him. He does this with bigger nets, traps, and even a robot version of himself. Near the end of this montage, we see something extremely vital. The sign that once read a population of 4 million, now reads 0. That is right, in the span of that little montage, Sponge rounded up 4 million jellyfish for crabs. On the bright side, we saw earlier that the jellyfish do not mind giving out their jelly, and it is a sustainable source. I have to imagine Spongebob had this in mind, as I don't think he would want his source to dry up either. Soon we see that he missed a single jellyfish, the blue one from before. The blue jelly hunts Spongebob all the way back to his house. Here we see the jelly get creative by calling him and just breathing into the phone, all the way to cutting off the lights and sneaking into his house. Once inside, he leaves an irresistible trap for the sponge, a Krabby Patty of jelly in it. Of course, he falls for it, as next we see him in the same type of jar used to catch jellyfish. From here, things get pretty dark. Spongebob is escorted to a giant factory where he sees the same jellyfish he caught getting tortured. We see them getting squeezed for everything they have, including their lives. After getting their jelly, the jellyfish is shown as diminished and thrown in the trash bin. There could only be one person responsible for all this, as Mr. Krabs is seen powering this whole mechanism by himself. Spongebob quickly confronts Mr. Krabs, but he tries to run away, but it results in failure. Sponge releases the jellyfish, and after a slight attack on the crab, they all go home like nothing ever happened. This always felt like an anticlimactic way to end the episode for me. That's why I'm looking to why. When we get our first show in the factory, there's a distinct number two on the front gate, which seems to signify that this is at least the second one built. Inside, we see Crab single-handedly powering the machine on a bike, looking pretty exhausted. Being a cheap man that he is, I feel like it is safe to assume that he powers both of these factories by himself. Crab is killing millions of jellyfish every day and just laughing about it. Think about that twice regarding the children's show. 
I also want to add that all of this was done with thought and he could not feign ignorance. This is demonstrated at the start of the episode where he is the only one in the Krusty Krab that does not partake in eating the jelly patty. Besides seeing the customer's reactions to it, he has probably known about SpongeBob's addiction to it for years. Although he may not have known how strong his effects really were until he saw some normal people try it. Besides that, he would claim to SpongeBob that they have to feed the whole ecosystem of fish down there to justify this demand. SpongeBob, we have a whole ecosystem for the hungry paying customers. This implies that Krabs had some sort of idea that this addiction would be widespread in the community of the Bikini Bottom. To push this past the point of doubt, he also built at least two factories where he single-handedly oversaw and caused the genocide of the jellyfish. It becomes even darker when you remember that the jellyfish allowed people to sustainably gather this jelly, but this process just wasn't fast enough for crabs, so he elected for the deadlier course. This stuck with me for so long because it reflects some real-life situations, and it's a pretty great analog. During the same time in our world, people were getting addicted to oxys and dying from it. The family behind it was fully aware and pushed even harder in all the name of greed. In the end, this family faced fees but were never punished themselves. For crabs, he was shocked a few times for taking millions of jellyfish's lives, but this is the mildest of punishments. They are all sentient sea dwellers, or in the end, greed won. The fact that this can be real to a lesser extent on the killing side is terrifying. Anyways, this is my first attempt at a Spongebob theory. Let me know what you think and leave a like if you like. You can check out my previous video here and what YouTube recommends there. Subscribe if you want more, and happy Halloween.